This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet 252-550. You can download this instruction sheet at snc.com. Type SM20, SML20, SME20, and SMD20 power fuses contain high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from company operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, users should follow their company's operating procedures and rules. This video covers storage, installation, replacement, and maintenance of SMU20 fuse units with indoor distribution, SM20, SML20, and SME20 mountings or with outdoor distribution, SMD20 mountings. Note that appropriate end fittings must be attached to the fuse unit before it can be installed in a mounting. While the SMU20 fuse unit can be installed in each of the mountings, the end fittings for use in an SMD20 mounting are dissimilar and not interchangeable with the end fittings for use in SM20 or SML20 mountings. Moreover, End fittings for use in an SME20 mounting are not interchangeable with end fittings for SMD20, SM20, or SML20 mountings. Though fuse units are designed to withstand inclement weather and wet conditions while installed upright in a fuse mounting, SNC recommends storing replacement fuse units in a dry place, away from sources of water. When storing fuses on a service truck, Store them in a closed container in the original packaging. Do not store them in an open container that may collect water and soak or submerge the fuse unit. Water entry into the solid material lining could damage the fuse unit. SM20, SML20, and SME20 mountings are indoor style. There are four steps to install the end fittings. Step one, the lower end fitting must be attached first. Unscrew and discard the red cap located on the lower end of the fuse unit. Next, slip the lower end fitting over the upper end of the fuse unit and slide it down until the locating slot inside the lower end fitting is aligned with the locating pin on the lower ferrule. Seat the lower end fitting against the shoulder of the lower ferrule. Then, thread the silencer onto the lower end fitting and screw it on firmly. The final fractional turn should be made with a bar or wrench handle applied to the base of the silencer. Step two, slip the upper end fitting over the fuse unit. Align the locating pin inside the upper end fitting with the locating slot in the fuse unit and seat the upper end fitting firmly against the upper end of the fuse unit. Tighten the clamp screw firmly. Step three, for unused fuse unit end fittings, a coating of No Oxide A Special Oxidation Inhibiting Grease has been factory applied to the contact rod. Verify the presence of this grease and that it is still free of contaminants. If necessary, clean the contact rod with a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent and apply a coating of No Ox ID A Special Contact Lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease. Step four, for reused fuse unit end fittings, remove the existing coating of oxidation inhibiting grease and dirt from the contact using a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent. Inspect the contact for evidence of pitting. If pitting has occurred, file down any projections Abrade the surface until smooth with an abrasive cloth or scratch brush and wipe clean. Apply a new coating of No Oxide A Special Contact Lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease to the contact rod. If the contact has been burned, the contact and its mating contact should be replaced. SMD20 mountings are for outdoor style fuses. Station style mountings follow the same installation steps, although the end fittings may look different. To install fuse unit end fittings, follow these four steps. Step one, the lower end fitting must be attached first. Slip the lower end fitting 
over the upper end of the fuse unit and slide it down until the locating slot inside the lower end fitting seats on the locating pin on the lower ferrule. Next, back off the lock nut on the clamp screw. Then tighten the clamp screw firmly, secure it with the lock nut. Step two, slip the upper end fitting over the fuse unit. Align the locating pin inside the upper end fitting with the locating slot in the fuse unit and seat the upper end fitting firmly against the upper end of the fuse unit. Tighten the clamp screw firmly. Step three, adhere to the following instructions that appear on the bottom of the red cap, rain shield, located on the lower end of the fuse unit. Do not disturb this cap if fuse is to be used outdoors, overhead. As a point of information, this cap protects the fuse unit from water entry. Step four, for unused fuse unit end fittings. A coating of no oxide, a special contact lubricant has been factory applied to the current carrying contact surface. Verify the presence of this oxidation inhibiting grease and that it is still free of contaminants. If necessary, clean the contact surface with a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent and apply a coating of no oxide A special contact lubricant or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease. For reused fuse unit end fittings, remove the existing coating of oxidation inhibiting grease and dirt from the current carrying contact surfaces of the upper end fitting and the lower end fitting using a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent. Inspect these surfaces for evidence of pitting. If pitting has occurred, file down any projections, abrade the surface until smooth with an abrasive cloth or scratch brush, and wipe clean. Apply a new coating of no oxide, a special contact lubricant, or similar non-metallic filler oxidation inhibiting grease to the current carrying contact surfaces. If the contact has been burned, the contact and its mating contact should be replaced. Never leave a fuse in the open position. Next, we'll demonstrate the steps to replace or refuse SM20, SML20, or SME20 indoor style mountings. When the fuse operates, the fuse unit does not swing open, but the blown fuse indicator moves to the extended position, providing visual evidence the fuse unit is blown. Move the fuse unit to the open position and then remove it from the mounting. For more information on removing fuses, see the written instructions for PME, PMH, or metal enclosed gear. These can be found at snc.com. Danger. SM20 and SME20 mountings do not incorporate a live switching device. Hence, an unblown SMU20 fuse unit in such mountings must not be moved to the open position without first opening a series interrupting and isolating switch or load break elbow. Loosen the upper end fitting clamp screw and pry the clamp apart slightly using a screwdriver. Slide the upper end fitting off the upper end of the fuse unit. Then unscrew and remove the silencer. Slide the lower end fitting off the upper end of the fuse unit. Next, attach the end fittings and silencer to a new fuse unit following the instructions given earlier in this video. A blown fuse unit cannot be salvaged, discard it. Before reinstalling a previously used SNC silencer, catalog number FDA-1103, manufactured after June of 2007 onto the end fitting of the SM20, SML20, or SME20 power fuses, inspect the internal wear indicator. The indicator is a red metal ring mounted on the bottom of the open chamber of the silencer and will erode with each fuse operation. It is designed to be worn away after three operations at full fault current. When the circle is completely worn away, the silencer should be replaced. To avoid delay due to transferring of end fittings, spare sets of end fittings and silencers may be kept on hand for attachment to new fuse units before refusing is to be performed. SMU-20 fuse units have silver or nickel chrome fusible elements that are non-damageable. Consequently, there is no need to replace unblown companion fuses 
on suspicion of damage following a fuse operation. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.